Hey guys, my name is Scobie. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a low poly Pokeball in Blender. This is going to be a nice, quick, and easy tutorial. On screen, you can see what it looks like. Let's jump right into this. So, first thing I want to do is open up a brand new blank Blender document like I have right here. And we're going to be clicking A and A again to delete everything on screen by, by clicking the delete key and then clicking enter. I'm going to have a little thing down here in the bottom left that's going to show any keys or buttons I press. So, if you ever lost or if I go too fast, you can always look down here to see what I'm doing. So, the first thing I'm going to be doing is adding a UV sphere. So we're going to do this by clicking shift and A and we're going to be going to mesh and we're going to be adding a UV sphere. We're going to be adding 26 segments and we're going to be adding 13 rings to this sphere. This is the point that I found that worked the best for this. You can mess around with this if you want to make your low poly pokeball a little bit wider or a little bit like less jagged. This is completely up to you. Once you have your sphere created, hit the N key and we're going to be scrolling up to the top of this properties panel and looking for location. We're going to set the location to 000 to set our sphere perfectly in the center so we have the coordinates around it to work off of to make it a little bit easier to add additions later on. So once you have your sphere created and you have it in the center, we're ready to click the tab key to enter edit mode. We're going to hit control and tab to enter edge mode and then we're going to click A to deselect all of the points on screen so it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. Once you have this done, we're going to hit the number three on your numpad and we're going to enter the right side panel of your actual sphere. This is so we can see directly from the right hand side of what you're doing. Once you have this done, we're going to be adding some more segments to our sphere so we can have some more points to play around with and make it a little bit more fine detailed. So how we're going to be doing this is hitting control on R, highlighting over the area you wish to enter and you can see that there's a purple line on screen right now. Once you have the purple line exactly in the center, we're gonna be scrolling up 10 times. 10 is what I found to work for this. You can add a little bit more if you want it to look a bit more fine and detailed, but this is what I wanna do for mine. A little bit of trial and error, I'm just gonna show you how to get it done. Once you have this purple line, we're gonna scroll up 10 times to add 10 more segments. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're going to left click and without moving your mouse, you're going to left click again and it's going to add all these segments to our actual sphere. Click A to deselect all of these and all of our spheres have been added and you can tell that you can click and edit any of these points if you wish. I'm going to click back to number three to go back to center and I'm going to be adding these more lines on the top of this section, the bottom of this section and then the three up and down sections here. So I'm going to speed that up because I've already showed you how to do it, but you want to, you want to recreate this five more times. When you are recreating this, just make sure that whatever number of segments you put on the first section, make sure to put that on each subsequent section. If you want to do more, like I said, that's perfectly fine. For this example, I'm going to be using 10, but it's just a little bit of trial and error to see what works for you. So just make sure you get all of the segments done and then we can jump right back into this tutorial. So now that we've all the extra points added, we're looking for the exact center point. As you can tell from the middle of my sphere, there's a little yellow dot that's indicating where the center point is. If you can't find the center point, simply look for the line across the center point axis that we've set up. Since we've set the coordinates of this to be 0, 0, 0, we should be able to see from the center point line, this is exactly where the center is. So what we're going to be doing now is making sure we're in edit mode by coming down here to the bottom left and making sure that we're in edit mode. We're going to be clicking control and tab and we're going to be entering face mode. We're going to be selecting the four points around our center so we know exactly where the center is so we can zoom out a little bit and straighten ourselves up. Hit number three in the numpad one more time and we're going to be putting our cursor exactly in the center. We're going to be hitting the C key to bring up this small circle around our cursor, which is going to allow us to highlight points wherever we drag and drop it. We're going to be using this and the circle shape of it to select our circle shape for the indent in the Pokeball. I'm going to right click to deselect this circle and I'm going to just control and Z to remove the point that I just did. You don't have to do this. This is just to show you an example of it. I'm going to put my cursor in the center again. I'm going to hit the C key. I'm going to make sure I stay perfectly in the center and I'm going to zoom out with the actual circle to make the circle bigger to select some of our points. So we're going to be selecting a somewhat circle shape, something like this, which is going to select the points on the actual circle to make it a nice circular shape. So something like this should work. And if you left click, your circular shape will be made in the Pokeball. From here, we're going to be going to the side. We're going to be tracing the center and we're going to be adding three points on top and bottom to make our strip around the Pokeball for the black strip. When you're adding your points, make sure to hold shift so you actually add the points. So three on top and three on bottom. And then I'm going to add all my points all the way around to give this nice strip around the Pokeball to make it look fully defined. 
I'm going to be doing this on both sides. You can use the circle again if you want by clicking the C key, making it a little bit smaller, and then just tracing the way around. It can make it a little bit speedier. If you add additional points by accident, simply hit middle mouse and it will deselect those points, and you can just select all the way around. I'm going to speed this up because this can take a little bit of time, but just follow on and select all the points around that you just selected. So now that we've all of our points selected, we're just gonna do one more quick soup around to make sure everything is in line and everything seems to be just fine for me. Next thing we're gonna be doing is extruding the face. We're gonna click the E key and we're gonna left click straight away to make a duplicate face exactly on top of where we were right now. We're gonna hit the S key to scale this point in by just dragging in towards the center of the actual sphere. And if we left click, it will drop it in that point. Now, if you move around your sphere and you notice that the point is not perfectly even all the way around from your scaling, that's a problem that can be easily solved. And as you notice, it's exactly the same for me. What we're going to do is we're going to control and Z to go back a step. And we're going to be changing down here on the bottom left. We're going to be changing where our point centers by making it go to the box center by clicking this one at the bottom. And if we scale it in one more time, a little bit, you'll notice that it's perfectly uniform all the way around to make the Pokeball look nice and even and professionally done. So now that we have the inward point, we're ready to click A to deselect. And now we can just quickly hit the tab key to exit edit mode and quickly admire our fine work so far. And I'd like to say it looks pretty good so far. Once we add some color to this later on, it's gonna really pop and shine. But for right now, we're ready to go back to editing. Select your sphere one more time and we're gonna hit the tab key to go back into edit mode. Hit number three on your numpad or whatever number sign you set it up to, to line up perfectly with the flat face. We're ready to put our cursor back in the center. We're gonna hit the C key one more time to bring up our actual point selector. And we're gonna zoom out a little bit smaller than our initial sphere. This is so we can select the one more point to go a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna select something around here, should be nice and smooth for this. And I did actually notice that I did make a small mistake because there is some extra points here at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here, hold the shift key and just add two more points because I kind of like the shape of the sphere that it's making currently and everything else seems to be lined up pretty well. So that's not a big mistake. Of course you can change this if you want to make it a little bit tighter. You can do that of course. Once you have your points selected, we're ready to extrude out one more time. Hit the E key and left click straight away. And this time we're not gonna be scaling out, we're gonna be dragging the outward point on our points. So as you can tell, this is the red arrow right here, and we're gonna bring it out to the point where it matches up perfectly with the rest of the sphere. So for this, I'm gonna be hitting the number one key to go to a side perspective view. And as you can tell, I can't see the sphere at all. And this is not an issue that is wrong with Blender, it's just the fact that we're currently in perspective mode. So if I go back to number one and I hit the five key, we can easily go in and out of perspective mode. And the reason I didn't show you this earlier is because we didn't need it exactly until now. We're gonna be zooming in and we're gonna be panning by holding the shift and middle mouse button to go to the edge. And we're gonna be lining up the outside of our sphere to match that as if it was a perfect sphere, these would all line up pretty well. As you can tell, it looks pretty good right now. So I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So it looks pretty even all the way around. So from this point, I'm going to be hitting A one more time and I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Now, of course, there is one more little dot in the middle of a Pokeball, so I'm gonna be going to the center once more by hitting number three on the numpad. I'm gonna be coming to the center of our actual sphere. I'm gonna be hitting the C key to bring up our selector, and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just so it's still smaller than our previous point. Hit the C key again, and I think this might be a little bit more suitable. Yeah, that looks like it's a little bit better. Hit E one more time to extrude, click left click straight away to just drop it and grab our red arrow to just drag it out a little bit more so it's actually somewhat of a button and i think you don't want to bring it out as far as you did initially but something like that looks pretty good and i'm pretty happy with that so if we now hit the tab key you can tell that we have our initial pokeball shape we have the actual indent and then we have our two buttons on top of that and i kind of like this jagged low poly look i'm a really big fan of low poly if you can't tell from all the low poly stuff i have on my channel so i'm really happy with how this looks right now so we're ready to start actually coloring and this is kind of a fun part but i find it a bit tedious i find the actual coloring to be one of the most annoying parts but we're going to be going through it step by step and getting it done right now so because i actually hate coloring i did find some hex decimal codes for the actual colors i'm going to be using which i will put in the description to the web page and i'll also be just be putting the hex decimal codes in the description that i'm going to be using for this so for this we're going to be coming over to our right hand side panel and we're going to be coming to this little ball shaped thing here we're going to be clicking on it and we're going to be adding three different actual colors so i'm going to click new uh, i'm going to click the arrow on the top right i'm going to click plus i'm going to click new again i'm going to click plus up on the top right again and i'm going to click new one more time and these are going to be our three colors so i'm going to rename these actually so the top one is going to be red 
the middle one is going to be black and the bottom one is going to be white white or silver it really depends on what you want with this so i'm going to select the red color first and i'm going to come down here to diffuse color and i'm going to go to hex and i'm going to enter in our hex decimal code that we have simply come in here click hex paste in your code and click enter and you have your nice red color for your pokeball i'm going to come to the black color I'm going to grab my black hex decimal code. I'm going to enter it in in the diffuse like we did previously. Click it in and click enter and you have your black color. And finally, I'm going to enter the like soft white or whatever you would call it by coming to the white one, selecting the white diffuse, coming to the hex one more time, entering in and clicking enter. So now that we've all of our colors selected, you can tell that our Pokeball went red because red was the first actual color we made on this. So we're going to be editing this by hitting the tab key and we're going to be selecting all of the points that should be black first. So what I'm going to be doing is selecting all of the points in and around. Now this could take some time, but simply hold the shift key and just select all of the points around that should be black on a Pokeball. And that's all the indented points around the circle and around the actual defining line where the Pokeball would open. So I'm actually going to be speeding this up because this can take some time. All you have to do is selecting all the points you wish, hold the shift key and then just right click them all and you should be going nice and quick. So now that I have all my points selected that need to be black, I'm ready to come over to the right hand side panel again, select my black color, click assign and all the points that we have selected will turn black. If we hit the A key, you can tell that they're all gone black now and we're ready to select all of the bits that need to go white and then we're going to be ready to go. So once again, I'm going to speed this up because selecting the points can take some time, but make sure to utilize the actual C button to make up the actual selector that I showed you previously, because it can really help speed up the process. So once you have all the points selected, we're ready to come back over to our right panel one more time, select the white color, hit the assign key, and then all of our points will change to white. Hit the A key to deselect, hit tab to go out of edit mode, and you can tell now we have this beautiful low poly pokeball. Now you're ready to start rendering or to do anything else you want with it. First thing you should do really though is to save it. So first thing I'm gonna be doing is clicking control and S. I'm gonna be saving this just low poly pokeball. And it is as simple as that to create a beautiful low poly pokeball. You can do anything you want with this from now. And of course this is open to interpretation so you can do any little bit of editing you wish. You can change the top point of this to be a slightly different shade of white if you want. Or you can change the bottom part of this to be a slightly different shade of red or anything else you want to do with this you can play around with different like coloring techniques in blender blender is really powerful but this is just a basic pokeball to get you going and it was more of an interesting fun hearted project that i decided to make this if enough people ask i will give the source link to this i can upload it to mediafy or something like that i might do that anyway and leave a download link in the description down below for this pokeball so you can actually just download it and use it for whatever you want yourself Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this, like I said, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel, I'm going to leave two videos on screen, the one on the left is going to be my most recent upload, and the one on the right is going to be one that YouTube most suggests that you will watch, so you should probably check it out because it's apparently for you. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, until next time as always, keep it saucy, peace.